Welcome to the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get the home field advantage with health care coverage from Farm Bureau Health Plans. They've been protecting Tennesseans since 1947. We're glad you're with us. Amy Wells is here as usual. Welcome, Amy Wells. Hey, Mike Keith. How are you? I'm fantastic because we have lots of special guests on the program this morning. The Titans' first round selection in the 2020 draft. Wearing number 79, tackle Isaiah Wilson is here. Welcome. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> the Titans' second round pick, he'll wear number 26 out of Louisiana State University, Christian Fulton. Good morning to you and welcome to the OTP. Good morning. Good to be on. And the Titans' third round pick, he'll wear number 32. He's out of Appalachian State, Darrington Evans. Welcome to the official Titans podcast. Good morning. Thanks for having me. We're so glad to have the three of you with us. And Amy Wells, live guests as well, Titans season ticket members. We're glad they're here. Thank you for all of your support. And tell them how they can get involved in this edition of the OTP with the Titans' top three draft picks from 2020. You know, Mike Keith, we're big on involvement on this program. We like to hear from the people. So use hashtag OTPQ on Twitter. I will find your questions and I will ask it to our newest Tennessee Titans. All right, let's start with numbers. I mentioned the numbers, and I'm going to go in order. 79, Isaiah Wilson, that was your number at Georgia. That's going to be your number with the Titans. Did you get to pick it, and is there significance at all to that number? Um, I actually did get to pick it, and the significance is coming out of high school, I was wearing 74, and when I got to college, and Another player had 74. My coach said, I'm going to give you the biggest number that you could legally wear. So it kind of stuck because I can't wear 80, but I can wear 79. All right, Christian, moving to you. Now, you wore a couple of numbers at LSU. 26 was not one of them. Did you pick 26 with the Titans? Yeah, I did. Um, It was uh, really the only number available in the 20s, so I wanted to wear 20. And uh, it just just reminded me every day, you know, um, like I, I had eight corners, you know, selected before me. So, you know, just add it up, and it's a reminder for me every day. Really. Two plus six equals eight. Well done. All right, Darrington. I know you weren't thirty-two at App. Do you like thirty-two? Did you pick that? And is that one you you think you'll stick with? Yeah, I got to pick it. Um, you know, I feel like I'm gonna stick to it. You know, make the number. Thirty-two is a fantastic running back number, though. That's. That's pretty doggone good. It's like 12 at quarterback. There may be no better running back number than 32. Yeah, they got a pretty good line of running backs that had 32. So you guys all had a very interesting virtual draft experience. It was something that had never happened before. So Isaiah, I'm going to start with you. What was that experience like? What was the best part of being involved in the NFL's virtual draft? One, it was a very fun and exciting experience. and I think the best part about it is just seeing the the people that you kind of grew up with and you meet a lot of people through recruitment and in college you play against a ton of people. So just seeing everybody just achieve their dreams along with with you achieving yours, I mean, it's definitely just a special feeling and getting to spend that time with your family and all that quality time. And I, I definitely took advantage of it. I really enjoyed it. Christian, what about you? What was your favorite part of being involved in the virtual draft? I definitely say it's the same as far as, you know, uh, spending as much time as you can with your family. You know, it's a special time, you know, for not only yourself, but for your family. You know, they sacrifice so much, you know, just for you to get that, for them to uh, share that moment with you, you know, uh, you know, it was definitely, you know, special. And, um, you know, I, I like the virtual job. Darrington, what about you? You know, I would say my family was more excited and more eager than I was. Uh, you know, the draft was obviously different being virtual, but, you know, it was it was always a dream come true, and you know we we can't be thankful enough for it. Darrington, I want to stick with you to lead off the answer to this next question. This is from Dustin in Nashville, our first OTPQ, and you can send those in via Twitter at hashtag OTPQ. Dustin in Nashville wants to know which player or players do you model your game after. So 
Let's go three, two, one on this one. Darrington, Christian, and then Isaiah. I would have to say um, more so growing up, it was always like Percy Harvin. Um, you know, he was a very versatile player, very explosive. You know, I just always loved the way he played. But I would say for an NFL player today, it would be Raheem Mostert. Uh, he's from my hometown. He's like a big brother to me. Um, and obviously everybody see how his career is going with the 49ers right now and just the things that he's doing on the field. I would uh, say probably uh, Tredavious White. Uh, just because uh, my freshman year, uh, he was my, he was senior, so uh, I, I kind of watched him a lot, you know, just to see how he went about his game and how he prepared. Uh, so him, uh, I was, you know, Tyron Matthew, you know, with him just being around the ball and how smart he is, you know, I try to, you know, take what he uh, adds to his game and what separates him. I would start off with definitely Georgia alma mater, um, Isaiah Wynn. I got to watch him for, for a year or two and just really got to watch the way he attacked practice, attacked his film, the way he took pride in his craft. Um, so I definitely try to learn from that and take as much from his game as I possibly could. And before him, I would probably say Trent Brown. Um, I'm, I'm a big guy. That's not a secret. <laughs> so I, I kind of liked watching him and kind of seeing how he – maneuvers and plays with being a huge human being as well. So I'll try to take a lot from his game. Christian, I'm going to start with you with this question. Um, where are you guys working out and what are you doing to stay in shape if you can't physically be at the team facility? You know, try to do some things, you know, on my own, just, you know, staying in shape. So as far as running on the levy, uh, we also have a workout facility here in Baton Rouge, you know, that's, you know, open, but, you know, limited you know, to people coming in. So uh, I, I have a facility, you know, just to uh, lift weights, you know, do DB drills with my DB coach. So um, um, that's what I'm doing right now as far as staying in shape and working out. Darrington, what about you? Where are you getting your work at in? Yeah, it's a private gym down here in Daytona. That's also one of the new summer that I go to. Um, you know, limited people at the same time as a field. So I'm able to do my conditioning, uh, my running back work, and then my receiver work out there as well. Isaiah, are you going straight Rocky style or are you going to a facility somewhere <laughs> too? Uh, no, I'm definitely going to facilities. There's a limited facility in Jersey that I have access to um, pretty much off of who I know. And I've been able to get some beach workouts in in Jersey. So that's kind of where I'm getting the blunt of my workouts at. I got another OTPQ. This one from Alex in Nolansville. Start with Christian on this one. What players are you looking most forward to playing against this upcoming season? I definitely, you know, got to go with Joe, you know, number one pick teammate. So uh, definitely looking forward to playing against him. Um, Justin Jefferson, uh, who else? DJ Targ for Jacksonville. You know, um, we went, we had a couple battles in practice, so it's going to be fun, you know, to get some game experience against him. Uh, who else? Um, uh, also, you know, the Ravens, you know, going against, you know, um, Lamar uh, and their team, you know, it's going to be fun. I think so. I would definitely start off with, I, I want to go against Andrew Thomas as a team, just so I can see him after the game and talk to him. It's been a long journey. Uh, he's been my brother since the start, so I definitely want to see him in, in game environment and interact with him after. Uh, Jonathan Ledbetter, definitely want to get some game reps against him. Had some battles in practice, so I, I would love to see what happens when the intensity is uh, super full throttle and it's a game situation. And pretty much any any extremely respected D end out there or outside linebackers, so I could just pick their brains after the game. So JJ Watts, the Von Millers, any of those people, Cameron Jordan, guys that I, I could learn a ton from is uh where I where I wanna wanna play against. I'm gonna have to go with some of the hometown guys, Cole Holcomb, linebacker for the Redskins, and then uh, Dakota Dixon, uh safety with the Bucks, just kinda you know, go against them, it was kind of cool being on the same high school field as them um, and now being professional level, you know, compete with them. It would be real nice to go against them and then, you know, chop it up with them after the game. Darren, does it almost blow your mind that, you know, just a few years ago you're on the high school field battling with these guys and now you're going to be playing on the biggest football stage in the world against some of your longtime friends? Mind-blowing, right? I mean, it is at the same time, you know, the work ethic that they had and that they instilled in us, you know, they set the standard. So um, growing up, you always knew they were great players, you know, they had great talent. It was just about the, you know, the will to stay on track and do what you need to do to get there. 
Brenda from Franklin. This is an OTPQ. I want to start with Isaiah. What do you think will be your toughest challenge this year as a rookie? What do you anticipate your toughest challenge to be in 2020? I just plan on coming in and working as hard as I possibly can, learning everything I can from the, the older teammates, probably getting some of mom's home cooking might be my, my toughest challenge. <laughs> but I, I plan on just learning everything I can and being the sponge, taking everything I can from all the older players, all the rookies that are doing things differently and better than I am. I just want to improve and be as much as a help to the team as I possibly can. Christian? My toughest challenge probably is going to be uh, probably being away from home, you know, uh, just going to, uh, you know, being from New Orleans and just going an hour away, you know, the Baton Rouge, you know, I kind of was out, I'm always, I was always in Louisiana, just making that transition, you know, uh, but also, you know, just leaning on the guys, you know, who's been in it, who's been in my position, you know, the guys in the room, you know, just uh, going to them, you know, asking them, you know, what would make this transition easier for me? And, you know, just doing what I got to do on the field, you know, uh, making sure that uh, my, my head is in a playbook, you know, so I, I don't have to, um, as far as really ask any questions, you know, it's concerning the playbook, but just uh, what can I do, you know, to uh, critique my game. All right, Darrington, what's going to be your biggest challenge that you anticipate this season as a rookie? Definitely, you know, learning the playbook you know, as much as I can. Once you once you get to learn the playbook, like Christian said, you know, you just get to play and do you without really thinking too much. I've got some OTP cues, Mike. We're going to go, we're gonna go. Stuff here. This one is from Greg, and he specifically has a question for Christian. And he says, what are your goals as a Titan this year? I want to come in and uh, just make an impact to where we can make the next step, you know, as a team, you know, made it to the AFC Championship last year. So I uh, feel like, you know, maybe one or two things, you know, that we could possibly, you know, work on, you know, just to, uh, like I said, make that next step. Not really, you know, focused on individual goals right now. You know, right now, just coming in, you know, earning a spot, you know, and make an uh, impact, whether that's on special teams, defense, you know, corner or nickel, you know, it doesn't matter to me. Darrington, this one's for you, and it's from Chris using hashtag OTPQ. He asks, what do you trust more during the draft process? Is it your agent? Is it a conversation that you had with a team? Is it an analyst? Is it a feeling? <laughs> what is it that you're trusting during that uncertain time? To be honest, it's, it's a little bit all over the place, um, especially with the virus, you know. You know, your agent, he's going to say you from this round to this round. You start to this person, this is how they feel about you. And then, you know, it just depends because every team is going to tell you the same thing for the most part. We want you. But, you know, it was just about getting you when they wanted to get you. So it's, it's kind of hard to say, but I would say it's a mix of everything, though. All right, Isaiah, this one's for you, and it's from a Georgia alum. Doug, he asks, which edge rushers are you most excited to face in the NFL? Everybody. <laughs> I can learn something from every single person I go against. They've been there longer than me. So any, any defensive end or edge rusher that lines up on me after the game, I'm definitely going to be in their, in their back pocket asking them what did they see about my set, what did they see about the hands, what, what did they watch and film and study that gave me away, if anything they give me away. So I'm just excited to kind of, you know, I'm kind of a kid in a, a big league. And as for every rookie, you're just a kid in a, a big league with a bunch of people who've been doing it for years. So you could, you go learn a lot from everybody you encounter. So I asked you guys about the virtual draft and I'm clearly just stuck on all of the new and exciting things that are happening right now. Cause I want to ask you about the virtual meetings. Are you finding it easier or harder to learn new material in uh, probably a very different arena than you've ever been in before. Isaiah, I'll start with you. It's definitely different. Um, it, it requires a lot more studying in your book, like just with flashcards and actually just reviewing your notes and rewriting your notes and saying it over and over and over to yourself. It's kind of like being in school, <laughs> um, but you don't get to actually do what you're learning in the lesson class. So that, that's the biggest difference, I would say, for me. And it, it has been a, a bit harder. I, I kind of like getting the reps and understanding things like that. I'm, I'm more of a spatial learner and hands-on kind of guy. So it, it's definitely been a little bit more difficult. But with the teammates we have, and you can ask anyone a question, and all the coaches are there wanting you to learn it and willing to help you learn. So that, that definitely makes it a, a lot easier. 
Yeah, I, I definitely, you know, say the same thing, you know, um, with it being virtual, you know, uh, it requires, you know, a lot more, you know, studying. Like I said, you know, I'm more of a hands-on guy. You know, I like to get the reps in, you know, to be a visual learner. So, um, you know, after the meetings, you know, you, you do a lot more studying, you know, just to make sure you got it. And like you said, also, you know, the coaches and you could text teammates too, you know, that'll help you on that. So I think that's, you know, that's a, a, a plus, you know, for all of us you know, to have somebody, you know, to talk to, you know, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. All right, Darrington, love it or hate it? Yeah, I would, I would say it's, it's just like what they said, you know. It's it's definitely different. It feels a lot like school. You know, you got to go over your notes, but, um, you know, not being able to get the reps and, and messing up out there so you can learn from it or learn from somebody else's mistakes is a little bit different. I'm going to stick with you for a second. How different is the football that you're learning right now from the football that you played in college? I mean, football is football, but – from a scheme and maybe what you're trying to learn specifically? It's just, you know, like you said, football is football. It's just the, the amount and in depth, how much you're going to go, and then whatever your coach asks of you. You know, as of now, I'm just trying to learn as much as I can about football, learn as much as I can about the NFL, and learn as much about the Titans as I can right now, and then just go from there and do whatever they say do. Christian, you're nodding in agreement. Your thoughts? So for us, you know, as a defense, uh, I feel like, uh, I came into a great system. We ran a 3-4 in college. So uh, most of the things, you know, are kind of similar. You know, I've been coming into a new system. You got different language. But it's for me, I'm kind of like taking what they have, you know, for as far as the Titan defense and try to, you know, put the put the language to each other, you know, from LSU. So it's kind of, you know, easier for me to learn because we kind of ran the same defense. But like I said, uh, you got to study more just to uh, pick up on the language. Like I say, it's important for all of us to be on the same page. You know, we got to all talk the same, you know, to be on the same page. So um, I think it's a plus for me, you know, just being in this system. Isaiah, how different is the Titans football from Georgia football? I honestly can't really tell yet. <laughs> but I would agree with Chris that uh, learning the language is extremely important. Um, in one system, something could be one call, and in the other system, the same exact thing could be a different call or a different formation or a different motion. So um, I'm just trying to learn all the language I can, so I'm speaking the same language as the people that are teaching me what I'm supposed to be learning. You're listening to the OTP with Titans first-round pick Isaiah Wilson, Second round pick, Christian Fulton. Third round pick, Darrington Evans. Mike Keith and Amy Wells here. And we're presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. When it comes to your health care coverage, you should be the one making the call. So call Farm Bureau Health Plans. They've been protecting Tennesseans since 1947. I want to ask a question about camaraderie because a rookie class is almost like a pledge class in a fraternity. Uh, you guys are sort of bound together. You experience this together. You will be close for the rest of your lives because you came into the NFL at, on a team at the same time. So, Isaiah, let me ask you a question. How are you guys getting to know each other because you can't be together in person? I may be weird, but I, I, since I don't talk to you often, um, for example, I don't talk to Christian Darrington too often. We have our meetings and whatnot. But I've been on Instagram and just see, like, what they post or if they like Future or, if, like, if they like the same artist I like or, like, those kind of things. So when I get there, you know, I have something something we can talk about, and I just try to be as friendly as possible. Like, at the end of the day, I haven't met these two in depth the way I, the way I would like to yet, but they're still going to be my brothers. They're still a part of the Italian family that we're all a part of now, so... That th that's just my cousin at the at the moment. Like <laughs> that's the way I look at it. I see you nodding, Darrington. Definitely different not meeting everyone in person, but at the end of the day, you know, we share the, the same common goals. So you know, it's it's something that we can stick on to at least have a conversation when we do finally get there, and then just work from there. And Christian, for you playing at LSU, this network of LSU players, a lot like a network of Georgia players. You guys are from all over the place, and you you guys have this network all over the place in the NFL. You sort of have tentacles to everyone already, don't you? Yeah, it's it's crazy, you know. Uh, but it's definitely you know going to be you know fun experience, you know, having those guys you know at different teams. It seems like I'm going to be playing somebody from LSU every week. So uh, you know, I'm definitely you know looking forward to it. You know, I'm happy for those guys, 
And um, as far as, you know, the camaraderie, um, like I said, just like them, you know, I'm trying to learn them, you know, as much as I can, you know, through social media. I follow those guys on Twitter uh, and or Instagram. And also, you know, I think the rookie, you know, development means, you know, helping us, you know, get to meet, meet together and uh, learn each other, you know, learn more about what we're getting into, you know, stepping into the NFL. Are you guys following Amy Wells on Twitter yet? You need to. At Titans Amy. She knows everything going on with the Titans. So make sure you give her a follow. Amy, before we go back to more hashtag OTPQs from Titan season ticket members, I have one more question to ask. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. You just pimped me out, man. That was great. <laughs> okay. Well, no, I want to make sure everybody follows you on Twitter. Okay. I want to talk nicknames because when we talked to Isaiah right after the draft, you told us about – the Panda nickname, you said to all Titans fans, call me Panda. People love that already, Isaiah. Please tell the story one more time of how you got the nickname Panda. So pretty much I was, I was out in Phoenix training for the combine and we were doing our speed drills. And like I went to a lot of summer camps when I was younger and they make you sit down, crisscross applesauce and even in like kindergarten, you know, you got to cross your legs and sit down. And as I got bigger, I just kept doing it because it actually like loosens up my hips. Like it's comfortable to sit when you're that big. So <laughs> I was sitting down and a running back came by, DJ Dallas. I don't know if, uh, if you guys know of him, but he came by and he was just like, man, you're just a big red panda. And I was like, you know what? That That's kind of, it kind of sticks. Like that's kind of suiting. And then everyone went with it and it, it just stuck after that. He's the panda. All right, Christian, the, the nickname I found for you was K-Baby. Do people still call you K-Baby? Uh, yeah, it's, it's cool. I kind of got used to it now. <laughs> I mean, it stuck with me, you know. It, uh, it got a good ring to it, so you know, they, they still call me that. Um, I got it from one of my teammates. My freshman year I came, you know, I was, I was 16 when I came, I believe. So I was the baby of the group. Uh, I, and I looked like a real kid. You know, I had no face with her. Uh, just looked like a baby. And he was like, I'm going to call you K-Baby. So it just stuck. All right, Amy, Darrington Evans' nickname is awesome. Do you know what it is? Uh, let me see, Darrington. You look like a – how about live? Live. When did people start saying Darrington Evans live, that that's your nickname? But do you, do you go by that with people? It started in high school. Um, it used to be live in HD. It was weird because – you know, after games and stuff, we'll get back to school and people are like, I'm going to start calling you live. It's like we watching a highlight tape, but live in person every Friday night. I'm like, y'all tripping. But then, like, <laughs> after a while, they kept saying it and kept saying it. Then I got to college and then, you know, my teammates, they, they went from calling me dancing to calling me live. And I'm like, all right, man, I might well just stick with it. That's awesome. <laughs> I think everybody thinks that's cool. Do we have questions from Titan Season Ticket members you want to hit, Amy? Uh-huh, I do. I have questions, and this is for all three of them. This is from Alan using hashtag OTPQ. He says, what has been the biggest adjustment to your everyday life now that you are an NFL player? Has anything changed? Definitely routine. I'm kind of trying to switch my routine to where, you know, you're waking up at 6 and you're not idle again until 5 because I've, I've talked to a few guys on the team and that's kind of what the overall resounding message was, just to find a routine and kind of start getting yourself locked into it so that when you get here, it's not like a punch in the mouth, like you got to wake up at six and you're not done till five and you're super exhausted. So I've just been trying to change my routine. Yeah, that's definitely, you know, my, my biggest thing. Also, you know, in college, you know, you have a set schedule. So uh, if they tell you to be somewhere, you know, you have, you have to be there, you know, at that time. But now, you know, you're on your own and nobody's going to make you get up, you know, to go work out or wake up, you know, and go to meetings. You know, you have to do it on your own. Definitely. So definitely, you know, routine is something, you know, that I'm, I've am i been working on, you know, just trying to, you know, wake up, you know, get my workout in early and be set and be on time, you know, for meetings and stuff like that. Yeah, I would definitely say routine. Um, You know, me being an hour ahead, it's kind of like I try to work out earlier in the morning, but my private gym don't open up until an hour before we start with meetings and stuff. So I have to work out in the afternoon. So, you know, I got to, I got to adjust a little different versus going early, but I would say that's the main thing, you know, make sure you're getting your hours of sleep in. That's important. Make sure you're eating. And then, yeah, I would say changing the way you eat. Um, You know, you already eating healthy and stuff, but you know, you got to take care of your body a lot more at home than you would at school with a nutritionist being on the meal plan and other things like that. 
Here's another question from hashtag OTPQ. Browning would like to know, do any of you have your cowboy boots yet? <laughs> yes. <laughs> really? Just ordered me some with a cowboy hat and all. You got a cowboy hat? Mm, I got a black cowboy hat and some, some black and blue boots. Nice. I'm so glad I asked. Yeah, me being from Florida, you get the typical answer, no, but um, me going to school at Appalachian State, I actually had one pair. No! Uh, we, yeah, we up in the mountains and stuff. I had one pair, but it's not on me, so I got to get a new pair. Well, now, Christian, this, there's some peer pressure here now. Pressure, pressure, That's pressure. It. It's crazy because, like, I have, you know, some close friends out there in Tennessee, and they all been, like, joking with me and my brother, you know, that y'all when well, y'all going to end up in some cowboy boots <laughs> and a cowboy hat. So now that y'all brought it up, I might have to. I might have to give me some. Uh, but it's crazy. I, I'm gonna give me some for my uh, former teammate Devin White. He got his own. He got a deal with some cowboy Justin boots. So I'm gonna have to hit him up to give me some. That's awesome. <laughs> That's the best. Okay, this is from Benny in Memphis. We'll start with Christian. How do you see yourself making an impact on the Titans in 2020? Just coming in, you know, and doing the little things. You know, and it start with you no know, special teams. You know. You don't want to take that phase for granted. So if I could come in, you know, as a gunner, you know, and uh, make that extra block, you know, to get some good, good field position for our offense, you know, I, I'll do that. Uh, if it's on a defense, you know, just making sure, you know, that I, I, I'm in the right run fits, you know, at nickel, knowing the down and distance, stuff like just knowing the little things, you know, and that's going to come with, you know, from asking the vets, you know, how they go about certain situations because, you know, those situations are critical. And that could be a, a point in the game where we need that, that uh, critical situation. So just learning from the vets. Football is football, but so it's all a mental game, you know, going to this, to this level. I would definitely say, you know, just getting in, you know, keep my head down, like you said, doing the little thing. But we still got to learn from the whole organization, learn our teammates. Um, we got to build trust with them. And then really just getting out there and just getting started. Um, you know, special teams are definitely somewhere that I've uh, – you know, try and make the most of my opportunities there. I did it in college, so that's just something I just you know, feel like I'm, I'm going to have to do at this level. And then, you know, on the offense side, uh, you know, just trying to do what I need to do, whether it's first, second, third down, um, just helping out in the run game, in the pass game, just, you know, making a difference. All right, Isaiah, how do you see yourself making an impact on the 2020 Tennessee Titans? Honestly, just being as healthy as I possibly can, really taking advantage of – all the training room and all the treatment I could possibly get. I'm just learning from everybody and in my like in my room and everyone in the organization really. But specifically for talking about offensive line play, we, we have a great offensive line room here, a great coach and I, I just wanna learn as much as I possibly can to to be ready to help the team in any way I possibly I possibly can. All right. So final topic, Isaiah Wilson to you first. Who is the current Titan who will be your teammate that you are looking forward to most meeting in person? I think it might be Taylor. Taylor I think it's Taylor Lewan. <laughs> he's, a, yeah. he's a very funny guy. We have already interacted on a, on a few occasions, and I, I think when we get in the room together, it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Darrington, who are you looking forward to meeting? I'm about to say, I'm going to have to go with Derek. You know, growing up, you know, I've seen him, seen him play a lot when he was at Yuli. I'm in Florida and then seeing lots to go to Bama and stuff, you know, being able to work with him and being beside him, pick his brain. That's just one area that I want to do. So that's, that's the main thing I'm looking forward to. You Florida guys running that ball. That's good stuff. All right, Christian, who is the current Titan you're looking most forward to meeting? All right. So I'm just say this is DB. I'm looking forward to meeting the whole group, you know, cause it's a very talented group, you know, smart group. Definitely. I say, uh, the newest tight, you know, Jonathan Joseph, you know, um, being in the NFL for 15 years, you don't, you don't see that often at all. So I'm a definitely, you know, being his heir, you know, just to see what it took, you know, just to make it that far, you know, um, you know, the average is three, but, you know, I'm going to do everything, you know, to pick his brain, you know, and definitely, you know, try to elevate my game by, you know, working under him and uh, seeing what I can do and learn. All right. Separate question for all of you to end. Christian, you first. Do you do an Ed Orgeron impersonation? <laughs> uh, I, did, um, I can't do that. I can't do it. And, and is he like that all the time? Most definitely, yes. He, 
definitely like that all the time. All right, Darrington, best place to eat in the Daytona, New Smyrna Beach area in your mind? It's a wing spot on Bethune Cookman campus uh, called Bethune Grill. They got some. They got some crazy wings. You gotta. You gotta try them. All right, Isaiah. This is this is for you. What do you want the Titans fans to know about this rookie class? Because you're the spokesman. You're the first round pick. By the way, you're the biggest one. So you have to be the one to talk for the group. You're talking to them now on the OTP presented by Far Bureau Health Plans. What do they need to know? We're ready to work. <laughs> We're just ready to come in and help the team in any way we can and. We're going to enjoy doing it and have a lot of fun doing it. Very well put. Uh, Amy and I were all excited about the three of you being drafted. We're excited about your class. We can't wait to see you in Nashville in action, but thank you so much for joining us on the OTP. Gentlemen, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. For Isaiah Wilson, Christian Fulton, Darrington Evans, and Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thank you for joining us for the official Titans podcast, the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plan.